I now look to Colonel Richard Kemp to continue the case for the proposition. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, having had my um, politically correct credentials impugned by the leader of the opposition, Mr. KD here, um, I just want to point out to him that he is out of date on that. I have been reprogrammed. <laughs> I visited Wadham College about a year ago. <laughs> And I, 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 among the other uh, elements of my indoctrination there were that um, I have to announce my gender pronoun before I begin speaking. So I have decided to opt for the pronoun Colonel, which, which is gender neutral. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the... Um, the motion that uh, the Arab world has betrayed or has uh, failed the um, Palestinian people, I fundamentally disagree with. I'm not sure if it's usual for a speaker for, for the motion to disagree with it in this house, but uh, I do. And the reason I disagree with it is because. It's to, to say that the, the Arab world has failed the Palestinian people is like saying the Nazis failed the Jews in the Second World War. Thank you. It's not, it's not, it's not a matter of failure. What subject do you study? Law. Law. It, to say that the law professor, a law professor at Oxford, failed KD because uh, maybe he neglected to look after his studies, he neglected to identify what kind of topics should be uh, studied and so on to get, the, to get his degree. Um, that, that's failing somebody. But what the Arabs have done, what the Arab countries collectively has do have done, and what the Palestinian leadership have done, is far worse than failure. It is betrayal. It's betrayal, it's abuse, it's using them as cannon fodder. It's turning them from being decent, ordinary human beings, wanting to prosper, wanting to have freedom, wanting to live in peace in their territory, into being simply weapons of war in a century-long, a century-long war between the Arab world and the Jewish national homeland. And they have been these benighted Palestinian people. And I know many of them. I've seen their suffering. I've spoken to them. I've witnessed their suffering firsthand. They have been cast off and abused. They are simply bullets to be fired from an Arab gun. How have the Arabs um, abused the Palestinians? Well, since the, the creation of the State of Israel and before, going right the way back, to really to the Balfour Declaration. The Arabs and then subsequently the, uh, the Palestinian leadership when Palestine was invented as a, a people, when, uh, as a potential country, the, um, the Palestinian leaders have rejected every single opportunity to create a, a self-governing homeland for the Palestinian people within the former mandate of Palestine. And that goes right back to their rejection in 1917 of the Balfour Declaration. And it includes, right up, coming right up to date, it includes their, their um, not, they didn't even reject uh, President Obama's initiative, they simply walked away from it before it got anywhere. And they haven't only um, rejected uh, the current US administration's initiative, they, they've, they've rejected it without even hearing what it is. And this has been the pattern all the way through, a pattern of rejection and denial of, um, of, of any possibility of rights for the Palestinian people beyond what they have now. I want to, um, to, to illustrate that, I want to just make a couple, read from a couple of quotes um, from, really, from the horse's mouth. And the first one 
Uh, it, this is from uh, Emile Gouri, the secretary of the Arab Higher Committee, who said, I do not want to impugn anyone, but only to help the refugees. The fact that there are these refugees is, is the direct consequences of the action of the Arab states in opposing partition and the Jewish state. The Arab states agreed upon this policy unanimously, and they must share in the solution of the problem. Ralph Galloway, the former director of UNRWA, said the Arab states do not want to solve the refugee problem. They want to keep it as an open sore, as an affront to the United Nations, and as a weapon against Israel. Arab leaders don't give a damn whether the refugees live or die. This has been the pattern of um, rejection. And the, the, the Arab countries, and now the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, do not want a two-state solution. They're not interested in a two-state solution. They're interested in one thing only, and that is the destruction of the Jewish state, the dismantling and the destruction of the Jewish state. And again, the lack of, of support for a Palestinian state, well back in history and today, can be seen from these two quotes. First of all, the Secretary General of the Arab League, Abdul Rahman Azam, said, Transjordan was to swallow up the central hill regions of Palestine with access to the Mediterranean at Gaza. The Egyptians would get the Negev, the Galilee, would go to Syria, uh, except for the coastal part as far as Acre would be added to Lebanon. So they were talking about carving this precious Palestinian national homeland up. It was never a consideration that they would actually establish a, Jew, a, a Palestinian national homeland. And President Nasser of Egypt said, the Palestinians are useful to the Arab states. As they are, we will always see that they do not become too powerful. Can you imagine yet another nation on the shores of the Eastern Mediterranean? It has been the pattern. No two states, no uh, liberation or freedom from, um, from, any, from the current situation that the Palestinians face at any stage. They have forced conflicts upon the Palestinians. The Arab nations since 1948 have sent armies into uh, the land to attempt to annihilate the, 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 the Jewish state. And that, of course, has brought death and destruction and suffering upon the Palestinians as well. And since then, they have imposed and inflicted and, and um, supported and funded and directed terrorism against the Jews by the Palestinians. And that has been going on for a long time and continues today. It continues today uh, in Gaza, from the Gaza border, and in the West Bank, and in other parts of, of Israel. And where is this funded from? From the, 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 the greatest state supporter of terrorism in the world, Iran, and from Qatar, of course, the Arab country. So th this has been, this, this is a continuing problem. I have been there on the Gaza border. I've watched the um, the suffering and the violence which has been attracted to the area by the Palestinian people, by Hamas, in effect. The West has a role in this. The West, uh, with its greed and its lust for oil, has appeased the Arab countries and encouraged them. And we, by, by supporting this motion today, even though I don't agree with it, I think we are making a statement. And that statement is, we will no longer appease and support your retribution against the Palestinians. If this situation continues any further, then as has happened in the past, the only people to suffer, Israel is not going to suffer as a result of this, the only people that will suffer are the Palestinians. They will continue to suffer. And I urge you, ladies and gentlemen, to get behind this motion and make your voice heard against the continued suffering of the Palestinian people. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>